session we will uh, focus our discussion on EDCK 6 module 2. So let me share my screen. The title of module 2 is Definitions of 21st Century Literacies and Critical Attributes of 21st Century Education. For this module, the students will explore various definitions of 21st century literacy, including globalization and multicultural literacy. Also, attributes of 21st century education will be discussed which is significant to understand the needs and characteristics of learners and various approaches in teaching and learning. We have two intended learning outcomes. First, compare the basic concepts of traditional and 21st century literacies and skills. Second, explain the features and critical attributes of the 21st century literacies. So to begin with, let us uh, start with the definition and the presentation of various 21st century literacies and skills. So for number one, we have globalization and multicultural literacy. What is the definition of multicultural literacy? So multicultural literacy consists of the skills and ability to identify the creators of knowledge and their interests. So that particular uh, definition was provided by banks in the year 1996. Additionally, multicultural literacy refers to uh, activities that uncover the assumptions of knowledge, to view knowledge from diverse ethnic and cultural perspective and to use knowledge to guide it, to guide, or to guide action that will create a humane and just world. So that particular definition was provided by Booth in the year 2008. Global literacy aims to address issues of globalization, racism, diversity, and social justice. Defined by uh, a Chinese educator named Gu in the year 2014. So please take note from the definition of Gu, he uh, indicated the word racism. So nowadays, uh, uh, the word racism is very controversial, especially in the United States, wherein they are experiencing a uh, conflicts uh, between uh, black Americans and white Americans. Uh, issues confronting them are uh, those involved with uh, racial discrimination. Kung nabalitaan ninyo yung uh, uh, incident between uh, a white policeman and a black American, George Floyd, kung saan na uh, uh, inaresto ng mga police itong si George Floyd no? without uh, following uh, the due process. At kung saan uh, yung inaresto nila, George Floyd uh, died because of uh, asphyxiation, suffocation due to uh, police brutality. So in connection with global literacy, it refers also to the awareness and action consistent with a broad understanding of humanity, the planet, and the impact of human decision on both. Global literacy also aims to empower students with knowledge and take action to make a positive impact in the world and their local community. The second uh, literacy and skills in the 21st century is social literacy. So this implies a level of skill in being able to form respectful relationships. Also, social literacy implies learning about the give and take of interacting with others 
It includes the delicate, delightful, and sometimes very painful dance of sharing with others and allowing them to be real to us. Beyond stereotypes and labels and beyond simply being a means to fulfill our own needs. That's why we teachers, no? especially you, future teachers, you need to develop your social skills. No? Walang teacher na uh, totally an introverted person. No? You need to interact to socialize not only with your students but uh, with the stakeholders of the school, parents, government officials, uh, businessmen, no? uh, so that uh, you will be successful in your uh, field of specialization. No? You need to reach out with other people for you to become an effective and efficient educator. The third is media literacy. Media literacy defined, defined by educator as the ability to identify different types of media and the messages they are sending. When we speak of media, it encompasses or it includes print media such as newspapers, magazines, journals, posters, and theatrical presentations. Uh, media literacy also involves uh, the study and uh, immersion on various forms of uh, social media such as uh, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, and uh, the broadcast media, radio, and television. So being able to understand these various forms of information with an ability to make sense of what is presented is uh, the key to media literacy. So it's very important nowadays, especially we are using social media in the conduct of uh, our classes in the new normal. The fourth skill in the 21st century that we need to master is financial literacy. It is the ability to understand and effectively use various financial skills, including personal financial management, budgeting, and investing. People who are financially literate are generally less vulnerable to financial fraud. Importante ba to para sa atin teachers that we need to be financially, financially literate? Of course, no? Uh, hindi lamang kasi tayo more on uh, instruction. Kahit sabihin nyo na you are not aiming for a high position when you, when you are already in the field, uh, in, in the Department of Education or in the or in uh, PRIMSO, no? Importante pa rin kahit sa classroom lang kayo, no? Classroom-based lang kayo that you are financial literate because uh, you are also going to manage resources to maintain your classroom. Sometimes it involves uh, uh, financial resources. No? Uh, uh, for example, if uh, your stakeholders, your parents, uh, raise funds to improve some facilities inside your classroom, you need to be able to handle those uh, things. No? Because uh, financial management is one of the issues that you need to address when you are already in the field. The fifth uh, 21st century skill that you need to enhance or develop is also in connection to the third one, media literacy, is digital literacy. Okay? Digital literacy refers to the skills you need to live, learn, and work in a society where communication and access to information is increasingly through digital technologies like the use of internet, various internet platforms, uh, literacy in terms of in terms of the use of computers, social media, and mobile devices. As you can see here in our module, I provided you with a uh, framework uh, coming from 
JISC. So this uh, particular model <clears throat> no, shows to you uh, various elements of uh, ICT proficiency. So when you achieve or you reach the level of literacy in these four elements of ICT proficiency, you will be able to reach at some point uh, what you call uh, this one, uh, the digital, your digital identity and well-being. So you need first to have information, data, and media literacy, digital creation, innovation and scholarship, your skills in using uh, various digital and online tools in research, in creating various outputs and projects. How are you going to use uh, digital media in learning and development, especially in the new normal? Communication, collaboration, and participation. So if you achieve uh, these four types of literacy under digital literacy, you will be called an ICT proficient. And it will uh, be related to your uh, digital identity and well-being as a person. Next, we have Echo literacy, it is the ability to understand the natural systems that make life on Earth possible. To be eco-literate means understanding the principles of organization of ecological communities, such as the ecosystems, and using those principles for creating sustainable human communities. If you can remember in our discussion earlier, no? Uh, or later pala, no? we will uh, uh, tackle uh, interdisciplinary integration as one attribute of 21st century education uh, wherein you need to uh, uh, touch or link your area of specialization with other subject uh, for you to uh, be able to achieve a lesson that is holistic and uh, will uh, achieve total formation as one of your key result areas in uh, your goals as educators. Now, kung, uh, social studies major ka, no? hindi ibig sabihin, ang focus mo lamang ay social studies. No? You need to learn other discipline because in social studies, we also study various uh, kind of specialization such as science. No? Pinag-uusapan namin ang uh, climate, geography, geology, and those uh, areas are part of uh, physical sciences, meteorology. No? We deal also with mathematics, especially when we study and teach economics. Ganon din kayo sa languages. No? You deal with uh, history in teaching literature. You deal with uh, the sciences in teaching uh, biographical sketches of famous scientists or mathematicians or historians. The seventh 21st century literacy is arts and creativity literacy. It is a concept that looks beyond sitting with a book. So it is a holistic approach because it does not only uh, uh, cater uh, the reading and the writing skills of students, but also it uh, touches and develops 
other aspects of uh, a person. So, kung napag-usapan nyo na in your other professional education subjects, yung tinatawag natin multiple intelligences. No? Uh, hindi lamang uh, comprehension, reading, writing, uh, numeracy skills ang dapat tinedevelop inside the classroom. We need also to tap other skills. No? We need also uh, You need also to facilitate other activities that will help your learners uh, develop their untapped talents, such as arts and creativity, you know, like uh, visual arts, theater arts, so forth and so on. Now, uh, the second part of this module will uh, tackle critical attributes of 21st century education. So it's very important for you to be aware and uh, to understand these uh, attributes because in the future, pag nasa field na kayo, no, you need to apply all these uh, attributes, all these skills no, for you to become an efficient and effective educator. So we have eight attributes of 21st century education. We have integrated and interdisciplinary, global classrooms, 21st century skills, relevant, rigorous, and real world, creating, adapting to constant personal and social change, and lifelong learning. Your classrooms or activities should be project-based and research-driven. Your classroom should be student-centered. You must use technology and multimedia in your instruction. So let us begin with the first one. Okay, A 21st century educator should be an integrated teacher and should teach in an interdisciplinary approach. So nabanggit ko na po sa inyo yun kanina, no? A while ago, you know, that uh, teachers uh, should not uh, uh, be, uh, should not rely with uh, the knowledge and skills, values and attitudes that is uh, concentrated only in their area of specialization. So you need to think out of the box. You know, thinking out of the box is an essential skill of a 21st century educator. You need to go out of your comfort zone. Hindi yung uh, nagsisettle ka lamang sa lugar na komportable ka na gamay na gamay mo. No? Kasi mabilis ang pagbabago sa uh, larangan ng edukasyon. No? Taon-taon may mga innovations may mga teknolohiyang kailangan nating i-adapt para makasabay tayo sa mabilis na pagbabago sa edukasyon. So, teachers ay dapat umalis sa tinatawag nilang comfort zone. No? Because knowledge is no longer distinctly divided into clear-cut learning chunks or separate subjects. Education in the 21st century is characterized by linkages among various subject areas in an integrated manner. The new approach promotes the utilization of learning from various disciplines. Second, technologies and multimedia. Education in the 21st century makes full use of available information and communication technology, or ICT the use of computers in the internet, as well as multimedia, the use of audio and video-based instruction to improve teaching and learning activities. So this critical attribute implies that your school will need to acquire and use computers and various multimedia equipment to enhance learning to the best extent possible. Uh, 
one of the problems, especially of schools located in remote places, is access in internet connectivity. No, since uh, the location is very remote. Lalo yung mga paaralan na nasa mga kabundukan o yung mga isla, no? they are having difficulty in terms of internet. But then the government is doing all its uh, 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 efforts and using all its resources to build more infrastructure and to procure more uh, equipment. <clears throat> to cater the growing needs of the learners, especially in far-flung places. You know, the use of communication technology, you know, computers, internet, kaya nga ang DepEd, they are increasing their uh, capacity and uh, various implemented programs. Kaya nga may tatawag sila yung mga DCP packages or Department of Education computer packages being sent to various schools throughout the Philippines. The third attribute of 21st century education is your classroom should be a global classroom. Ano ibig sabihin niya? Education in the 21st century aims to produce global citizens by exposing students to the concerns of the region and other countries. So this is related to the, to the first one, interdisciplinary and integrated. No? All discussions, no, though contextualization and localization no, is also important, but then we need also to be aware of what is happening outside our country. But we need also to study uh, situations and conditions, no, events that is happening outside our country. Because as we move on in the 21st century, no, the world is getting smaller and smaller because of the power of the internet. Kung dati, you need to travel outside the country just to see other uh, heritage sites, other sceneries, other uh, tourist destinations. Mm -hmm. Now with the power of the internet, no, you just Google it, use various types of search engine. No, virtually, you can go to that specific place that you want uh, to go. No? So, global classroom is a critical attribute that implies that teachers need to include current global issues or concerns such as peace issues, respect for cultural diversity, climate change, and global warming in classroom discussions. Fourth, creating, adapting to constant personal and social change and lifelong learning. 21st century education subscribes to the belief that learning does not only happen inside the school, okay? Learning does not uh, transpire in the four, world, four walls of your classroom, okay? But then, learning also happens beyond the schooling years of a person, especially for us future teachers, no? Kayo, mga future teachers. At lahat tayo, mga teachers, no? Education is for life. We need to be updated. We need to level up. Don't settle for mediocrity. Ano ibig sabihin natin ng mediocrity, no? Being mediocre. Yung... Complacent ka na lamang. No, okay na ako. Graduate na ako ng four-year degree course. Tapos ko na ang BSE English, BSE Social Studies, Mathematics. Tapos ko na ang uh, B.E.D. No, don't settle for less. As educators, we need 
to uh, update ourselves in current trends and issues and technology and innovations being uh, conducted by educational researches, products of researches in various parts of the world. You know, learning can take place anywhere, anytime, regardless of one stage. Number five, 21st century education should be student-centered. Gone are the days that the teacher, the professor, no, is the only source of knowledge and information. Gone are the days. Lipas na ang panahon ng guru lamang ang source ng information sa loob ng klase. Now, 21st century classroom should be student-centered. No? Education in the 21st century should be tailor-fit, should tailor-fit to address the individual learning needs of each student. No? Especially when you are formulating your assessment, your instructional activities, it should not be a, a one-size-fits-all strategy. What do you mean by class by one-size-fits-all strategy? You formulated a particular assessment device or instructional device. Bahala na lang. Para sa lahat yan. Slow learner, average learner, fast learner. Isang approach ko sa pagtuturo. No. Okay? First and foremost, you need to learn and study and understand the nature of your learners. No? Hindi lahat ng uri ng assessment no? ng paraan ng pagtatasa, ng pagkaunawa, ng kaalaman ng mga estudyante natin ay gagamit tayo ng isang pamamaraan. Kaya nga, meron po tayong tinatawag na iba't ibang types of assessment. You have the formative assessment, then you also have the summative assessment. Nandiyan din yung tinatawag natin mga performance tasks. Okay? That will cater various needs and interests of our students. Okay? So, ang isang student-centered classroom, so this particular attribute implies that teachers should act as facilitators of learning. Hindi niya monopoly ang information sa classroom. Kasi sometimes, may mga informasyon din na makukuha ang guro, ang professor, ang instructor sa mga mag-aaral. Kaya importante, aside from assessment, maalam din ang guro sa iba't ibang uh, pedagogical strategies, instructional strategies, no? To make his or her classroom or the teaching and learning process fun, exciting, interesting, interactive, at hindi magoboring ang mga sudyante. Learners should be given opportunities to discover new knowledge, learn with one another, and create their own learnings. <clears throat> we are down to the last three critical attributes of 21st century education. Number six, 21st century skills. So education in the 21st century promotes the skills needed to be productive members of today's society. So hindi lamang enough na mga sudyante na master na nila or they are already capable to read, to write, and to count. Yung tinatawag natin three R's. But teachers should develop okay, skills that would help them cope with life and work in 21st century communities. Kaya nga po, ang edukasyon sa panahon ng ikadalawampu't isang siglo dapat ma-attain natin at ma-achieve natin sa mga classroom natin. Yung tinatawag nating lifelong learning. Ito yung mga learnings na hindi lamang applicable o mailalapat sa isa, dalawa ng mga sitwasyon 
bagkus ang habang buhay. Practical. No? Ito yung may kaugnayan din dun sa tinatawag ng ating functional literacy. Na kung saan itong mga KSAVs na to, knowledge, skills, attitudes, and values na ito ng mga sudyante, bit-bit nila habang buhay, nagagamit nila, na ilalapat nila sa kailang pang-araw-araw na pangumuhay. These skills include among others. Ano ang itong mga skills na ito? No, yung mga tinatawag natin mga HOTS. H-O-T-S. Higher Order Thinking Skills. No? Such as critical thinking, uh, yung pinag-aralan natin sa Bloom's Taxonomy, we have remember, uh, syempre, pinaka-basic, no? The building block is remembering. And as you go up, no? Yung complexity at difficulty ng skill, no? Patas ng patas. You have com uh, analyzing, hanggang ma-reach mo yung pinakamataas, which is creating, evaluating. Nandiyan din yung synthesizing. Kasama din dyan, class, yung mga problem-solving skills. Take note, ang problem-solving skills ay hindi lamang applicable in mathematics. Also in social studies. Because we have what you call this uh, case study activities, no? especially in economics. Meron din tayo tinatawag na historical thinking skills. Decision making. And ICT literacy and skills. Number seven, we have project-based and research-driven. Among the critical attributes of 21st century education is the emphasis on data, information, evidence-based decision-making. That's why, ayun ako pa sinasabi, no? It is important for a teacher that a teacher knows how to evaluate and assess students because the information gathered from various evaluation and assessment activities and instruments employed by the teacher in measuring the understanding and skills of his or her students will be very significant no? in helping the teacher formulate various activities and tools so that he can be able to achieve his learning goals or targets. No, hindi, lamang, hindi, hindi tayo dito na, na, na nag-shotgun lamang ng mga, ng mga activities. No, dapat uh, nag-set tayo ng mga objectives. We need to attain those objectives. No? We need to attain or achieve those competencies as stated in the curriculum. No, lahat ng ginagawa ng teacher should be research-driven. Kaya nga, uso po ngayon sa mga teachers, yung natawag natin mga action research para makapag-formulate ang teacher ng mga activities na makakatulong sa kanya para makapagbigay ng intervention kung may mga kakulangan sa mga sudyante para ma-strengthen yung mga weaknesses ng mga sudyante para matupad natin yung sinasabi nga ng Department of Education na no one is left behind. Okay? Hindi yung nagpamanipulate tayo ng mga data lalo pag nagre-research tayo para ma-please natin yung ating mga superiors, yung ating mga principal, yung ating mga nasa matataas na posisyon. No? So, project-based and research-driven implies that teachers of the 21st century need to be knowledgeable about research to guide their students' learning through self-directed activities such as learning projects within and outside their classrooms. So, teachers should also implement research-based projects kasi ito na talaga yung mga tatawag nating mga project that will target yung tinatawag natin mga higher order thinking skills na mga bata, that will measure the higher order thinking skills of the students. 
yung mga tinatawag din natin mga capstone projects, mga culminating activities that will showcase no, the skills, knowledge, attitudes, and values acquired by the students in a particular chapter or in a particular unit quarter or semester. Last but not the least, teachers should be relevant. Classrooms, our teaching and learning process, our instruction should be relevant. It should be rigorous and our activities should be real world. No? Paano magiging 21st century education? ang activities mo kung panahon pa ni Mahoma ang mga konsepto at ang mga pananaw at ang mga aktibidadis natin. So in giving real world situation, I can suggest one type of activity no, as provided by J. Maktai and Grant Wiggins. Ito yung dalawang nagpapasakit ng ulo ng mga teachers noon nung na-implement yung tinatawag nating UBD or, your, or yung tinatawag na Understanding by Design. Pero napakaganda ng, ng, uh, ng uh, framework na ito ng instruction. No? Yun nga lang talaga, mahirap i-implement kasi you need to study. Talagang alamin mo yung pinakugat ng mga lesson. So they provided one, uh, one approach in delivering performance tasks no yung tinatawag nating GRASP or GRASP. G stands for goal, R stands for goal, A stands for audience, S stands for situation, and P stands for product or performance. So why I am giving you this kind of an example? Because this GRASP approach by Wiggins and uh, Maktai no shows a real world uh, approach in terms of measuring understanding of students in a particular uh, lesson chapter or uh, or a semester no or a quarter or a quarterly uh, uh, subject matter no? Kasi nandun po yung tinatawa ating role. And then, of course, you have the audience and then yung P, product and performance. So, ang mga bata ay pupunta at ilalagay sa isang sitwasyon which is real world. Okay? In social studies, usually, they play or they act. They, their role usually ay mga government officials or mga uh, characters natin, real life uh, characters natin, whether they are in politics, whether they are part of religious institution, no? yung mga situation ay real world at yung mga products, yung mga performances nila ay konektado sa role nila. Real world situation and at the same time, vertically, vertically aligned sa mga goal, sa objective, at tina-target din at ina-achieve yung tinatawag natin mga competencies and skills as indicated by the curriculum. So this critical attribute implies that topics are thought using current and relevant information and link to real life situations and context. As a 21st century teacher, you need to be updated on the current trends, developments and issues in your school, community and in the world so that your teaching will be relevant to the lives of your students. So those are the eight critical attributes of 21st century education and the seven 21st century skills that educators must possess to become an efficient and effective Teacher. So here are some of my references. You may access it 
just click on the link. Okay? For supplemental readings. Thank you very much for watching and uh, listening. I will see you again in our next session.